my name is Erin Nicole and I am the founder of I Am Moonly. I am a functional nutritional therapist and welcome to my channel. So today essentially what we're going to get into is we're going to talk about why you can gain weight on a diet. And if you have been on one diet, I'm guessing that you've been on two, three, or four over your lifetime. So like why does this happen? I have had a massive history of dieting and most of my clients have. So as a functional nutritional therapy practitioner, I have people in my online courses, people that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, and there's always some type of history of dieting, whether it's a vegan diet or if it's the raw food diet, keto, or the 1200 calorie, like I don't even know what that would be called, but restricting yourself to 1200 calories due to an app telling you to lose this amount of weight in this amount of time, you need to eat this amount of calories and work out this much. So I don't want to bullshit you. I'm going to explain to you why diets don't work, why are they not sustainable, and why the work that I do is focused on literally figuring out what's best for your lifestyle so that you can have a healthy weight, but not just about weight. So your body is healthy. So you feel good. It's not just about how you look or what the number on the scale says, because we've learned that is also bullshit. So let's get started. So first off, I want to say the diets that I've done so that you guys all understand I have never done a diet. I have done diet. So the first diet I ever did was probably the restricted calorie diet. So 1200 calories. I did this like in before my teenage years due to like family influences. But then I also did 1200 calories right out of college with my friends with the My Fitness Pal app. So we would restrict ourselves to 1200 calories a day. We would record everything that we ate. We would, you know, scan the code or put it in the information. It would tell us how many calories we had. I would work out two hours a day and eat 1200 calories. So that can give you an idea of like, yeah, during that time I lost weight, but my body was in the most dysfunction that it was ever. I had high blood pressure. My heart was constantly racing. I was anxious. I was depressed. My endometriosis pain was super bad. My PMS was horrific. My period pain was through the roof. Like, yeah, sure, I was skinny, but my body was not healthy. And then as I got a bit older, I was like, okay, I'll stop restricting, which at this time I was still restricting, just like not 1200 calories. I switched to the raw food diet. So essentially where you only eat raw food fruit and veg, breakfast, lunch, and then you can have cooked stuff at dinner. I would say that this diet is very, very common now. It's like one of the most common diets that I see. And it's not that raw foods are bad. Raw foods are not the issue, but to have someone constantly eating raw fruits and veg, especially with the lack of protein, with the lack of good gut microbiome health that a lot of us don't have, that turns into an issue. And then I have not done the keto diet where you essentially cut out carbs, but I know this is a big one, especially for the chronic illness community. And lastly, low FODMAP diet. And I wanna say like out of all these diets, low FODMAP is actually not a bad diet. The only thing is people forget to remember is that low FODMAP is a temporary diet. So it should not be done longer than 30 days. And if you are going longer than 30 days, you should be working with a healthcare professional that knows how low FODMAP works. If you're going beyond 30 days, you should really not be going beyond 60 days. And if you're still having symptoms, there's something else going on and you need to get these foods back in because you're cutting out such a major food group. When you cut out those foods, you are losing so much nutrients, so much energy. And yeah, you probably will lose weight, but your cortisol levels, your estrogen, your progesterone, your entire metabolism is gonna be completely out of whack. It is not healthy. If you didn't lose weight, you probably gained it. And you're like, how did I gain weight on this diet? So let's jump into it. So why can you gain weight on a diet? So for the most part, I imagine you are going on a diet because you want to lose weight, because you have seen what society standard has said, you need to look like this, or even your doctor has told you, well, your BMI is you know 26%, so you need to get down to 22 or 21. So you're putting yourself on this diet, whether it's Jenny Craig, vegan diet, a 30 day whole food diet. There's, there's likely something that you've been put on. And so when you're put on a diet, your main goal is of course, getting your weight down and focusing on weight. Isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't want to say like you're a horrible person or you're doing the wrong thing. If you're focusing on your weight, it's not bad. But the issue is when it comes to weight, if we are for our body type, not at the correct weight, because our body does have a set weight that it is happy at, then yes, we start to notice symptoms arising. And that's where we want to figure out what is going on with your metabolism, not oh, we have to blame the weight, we have to blame the weight. No, your body is having this fat on your body for a reason, now we need to figure out why. So you've been put on a diet, you're trying to lose weight, you do the diet, you might actually lose weight while on the diet is one scenario, you actually lose weight during that 30 days, and you're like, wow, I feel so much better. But then you finish that diet, and you go back to eating the way you used to, because that is what feels good. Like, when you think about it, think about all the diets that you've done, did you actually feel good on those diets? 
No, probably not. You probably felt like crap. You were tired, you were exhausted, you were having cravings, craving the foods that you used to eat. And then now that you're off the diet, you're like, cool, I'm gonna stay this weight, I can eat whatever I want. And then maybe a few months later, that weight comes back and you're like, crap, that didn't work. So now I need to do another diet or do that same diet because I saw the results so quickly. Scenario two is especially for people who have dieted several, several times. Typically people who have dieted maybe once will probably notice that weight loss, but if you're on three or four or five, plus times of diets, you might be like, I've been doing this restrictive diet for 60 days and I've actually gained more weight. What the heck is happening? So essentially, when you put yourself on a diet, you are restricting. You are telling your brain to shut up because I want to lose weight. I want to look like this, so I'm not going to give it to you. I'm not going to give you the energy that, that it needs. So your brain basically registers that as you living in a famine. Your body registers like, okay, we are living in a famished environment. And when you tell your body that you are living in a famine with a lack of access to food, your body says, okay, this is a stressful environment. Your body basically says, we need to shut down the things in the body that aren't essential. So you might notice that your period goes missing. You might even notice that you gain weight because essentially what is happening to your digestive tract when you eat is your digestive tract is slowing down because it has kicked in a hormone called cortisol and even possibly adrenaline, which come from our adrenal glands that sit on top of our kidneys. These are our stress hormones. We need them. But when our body registers that we are in a stressful environment, we are in a famine, it produces those a lot more so that we can survive. And so it's going to slow down your digestion and try to hold on to the food that it is getting. So it's like, we're not getting enough food. So I don't know when the next meal is going to be. So I'm going to hold on to that food and I'm going to store it as fat because fat is literally energy. It helps us stay alive and keeps us alive a lot longer if we didn't have it. So your digestive tract essentially slows down and when it slows down you're going to hold on to that food you're going to be constipated you're going to lose your period you're probably going to be gassy and bloated because your body's not going to move that food that's why we notice a lot of people who have like long history of restricted diets have things like bacterial overgrowth and SIBO is because you have put food into your body it's not moving as quick as it should be because you've told your body hey it's a stressful environment so you need to hang on to this food because I don't know when my next meal is going to be or if my next meal is going to be sufficient enough to give me the energy and nutrients that I need to survive so then it is going to shut down hold on to that food and you will most likely gain weight and this is especially common for a lot of people they're like why did I gain weight and for those people that you know notice that when they did that diet they lost that weight they came off and it came back a few months later if not a few few weeks that's because you finally reintroduced that food back into so your body's like wow, oh my gosh, we finally have food. We're getting food consistently every day. Let's hold on to it again. And the other thing is when you did this diet, it was obviously not sustainable. If you have to do, granted, I am not talking about the low FODMAP diet here. The low FODMAP diet is for specific reasons. I'm talking about things like the keto diet and the whole food diet and the, what is the whole 30 or something like that. When you do these diets, you actually haven't changed anything about your lifestyle that is gonna be sustainable. When we're looking at the keto diet, are you, physically able to do that for 40 to 60 years of your life and thrive off of it. Do you feel like you're waking up in the morning, you're hungry, you feel good, you have energy to work out, you don't feel like you're gonna pass out when you work out, you aren't crashing between 12 and three o'clock in the afternoon needing an extra sugary snack to get you going. You have to be able to sustain this and thrive for a long period of time. In most diets, you're not gonna be able to do that. That's why you need to figure out what are those lifestyle changes that you can make. So you wanna find whatever lifestyle lifestyle change you can use to make your body feel good, but also put you in a healthy state. The other thing is get rid of the idea that you have to be in, within a certain BMI. Science has actually found when the BMI was created, it was not created to determine people's health. In today's world, we use it as a complete thing to say how someone is healthy. That doesn't make sense. And even most people who practice pro-metabolic health, like I do, I love practicing pro-metabolic health with my clients, you know, getting our bodies to feeling good, thriving, ch checking all of our biomarkers, such as checking our heart rate, our blood pressure, our basal body temperature, to see what our metabolism is actually doing. That is where we want to focus on, okay, that information is giving us a lot back. And what many women notice is that their body weight, when their metabolism is actually balanced out, might be at 30% BMI, which sounds insane. Trust me, I know. But like right now, I am probably heavier than I was when I was at my smallest, 
but I am like so healthy, so thriving. Like I finally don't have high blood pressure. I'm not constipated. Like I feel good, I'm happy. And that is important to take into consideration. So in my courses, I do talk a little bit more about this. If you are looking to balance out your metabolism and start focusing on having a good relationship with food, but also supporting your body with good, good nutrients and how to do that, I have a, I will provide a link to my online course. This is also for people dealing with things like PMS, painful periods, uh, PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, ovarian cysts. It's really about balancing out the metabolism and, metabolism and hormones with holistic nutrition. So I hope this video has been helpful to explain why you can gain weight on a diet. If you have any questions at all, comment below. If you have been on a diet and if you've had this experience, let me know about your experience. I know so many of us have been there and you can, there also can be a lot of shame if we haven't talked about it, but there's a lot of us out there that have experienced so comment below we can kind of create like this really good community of understanding there's no judgment um, but just finding ways that you can support yourself all right thanks for visiting i am moon lee and i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you all next week bye